we are at a pivotal point right now, Tyler, where trades are starting to happen. I think a lot of people early this season were probably like trying to just fill out their team, what they had, because we had performances that were all over the place. We had some guys that performed out of nowhere. A lot of our studs were disappointing. And we're starting to get to a point now where we can figure out some of these values. And especially for like this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, there are some question marks, right? Like if I had a middling team and I had Chris Godwin, I'd be pretty upset right now because you lose out on the top receiver in fantasy football right now. But that leaves us with the question marks about Mike Evans, who is also out at least until week 12. It seems like it's going to be a three-week thing for him. Plus they have the bye. And when it comes to Mike Evans, like we already know he's an elite receiver. I think that consensus is there. But for teams that are struggling right now, you might not know how to value him. You might need to get wins here. Maybe you could put him on an IR spot. Maybe you can't. Um, there's a lot of mixed value when it comes to Mike Evans. And I've always treated him as like a top 15, the top 12 guy. I've always been higher on Mike Evans, especially when, you know, there's not a supporting second receiver on the team. And I think mm -hmm. with Chris Godwin out, it's easy to forget what Mike does when he is the absolute wide receiver one. I think the bigger question is, if you were in the trade market right now, how would you value Mike Evans? Would you treat him as a top 12 wide receiver the rest of the way? Or are you looking to get whatever you can to get into the fantasy playoffs? Like, talk to me about your value with Mike Evans, knowing that, A, he has a hamstring injury, and B, this is something that could linger for a little bit. It, it, you know, he's an older player. Yeah, it just depends on how, like, my team is doing, right? I think he's definitely a, a, a guy that if you're a team that's, you know, comfortably in first place, you know, you, you have a couple losses on the season, he's a guy that I would try to go out – now the problem, like you said, I don't know when their buy is. When is their buy? Week eleven buy. Okay, so he has, and this is week nine. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so he's out basically until after the buy. So week twelve. So it just depends. Like I, like I said, it depends on how you're doing so far this season. But if I'm a team that's looking to make a playoff run, like I think I'm probably going to make the playoff run. He's somebody I would acquire, and I would be looking at him like I would value him right now. I want to value him as a top 12 wide receiver for the rest of the way, just because he's going to miss some valuable time. Like down the stretch, he could be a top 12 wide receiver, but yeah. for the rest of the way, I would kind of value him as like a mid wide receiver two, back end wide receiver two for the rest of the way. But once again, if you're a team that's in a spot where you can just stash him away, then I would kind of view him as more of that high end wide receiver two, back end wide receiver one for when he does come back and for the championship push. I don't even know who they play in the champion, like in those weeks. But yeah. just a guy that we know how good he is. We know he's a he's a red zone threat. Um, is always a threat to score multiple touchdowns in a game. So he's a guy that I would view kind of as a a really solid wide receiver too. That if I could acquire him for a team that might be struggling right now and needs a win, um, yeah, that, that I would be looking to do that. It's tough because with the injury, it, it does create like a sense of urgency if you have three wins or two wins or four yeah. wins. It's like you, you can't, can't really, really wait. Yeah. And if I, so there's a, one of my leagues, I'm three and five. Uh, yeah. I'm three and five. And if I had him in a league like that, you, you got to win, right? Like I have Nico Collins coming back next week. Like, thank God I have Nico Collins coming back. But if I had him in a league like that, or if I had two, like I'm aggressively trying to get him off my team because you have to win like you said yeah and you can't wait around anymore like it it's do or die kind of team you gotta or do or die right now for you time and, and you gotta aggressively make the moves to get these guys off of your team and get guys that can help you win right now because it's a weekly game at this point for you trying to make the playoffs so if i was on a team like that i'd be actively like yeah because i have a team that's like six and two and yeah. i had one of those teams i had Jaden reed on that team and it's stacked i got like aj brown jamar chase it was an auction league aj brown jamar chase cooper cup so the team is stacked and i was like you know what i could flip Jaden reed right now and maybe another small piece and go get Mike Evans, and then another piece that can help me as a starter right now. So I upgraded mm -hmm. my quarterback situation using Jaden Reed, and I don't think that there's a big drop-off on a week-to-week -week basis with Jaden Reed and Mike Evans. I think they're both yeah. similar territory to me. So that's the kind of move that I'm making. If I have a team that's 6-2, six 7-1, and, six and, and one, maybe even 5-3, and three, and you feel like you can weather the storm, this is the kind of player that you can go get, You can and you could just sneak out another win or two here over the next couple of weeks, secure your playoff spot, 
But now you have a player that can come in and give you wide receiver. When he's healthy, he's wide receiver one to me. He's a top 12 receiver, especially with no Chris Godwin. We know Baker likes to look his way. And the funny thing I think about all the time is that there's only going to be six games left in this season. Mike Evans has 335 yards. You think in six games he's still not chasing that 1,000 yards? You're kidding yourself. (laughs) He is uh-huh. for sure going to be chasing and in any bad matchup he has or any, you know, cornerback matchup that he can dominate, Mike Evans 100% is going to take full advantage of that opportunity. So just know a mega game is going to come out of that if he's healthy and able to be back by week thir- week 12. Um, that's the assumption right now, and obviously things can change. But there's like six, I want to say six games or seven games that he'll have on the schedule to be able to chase that thousand yards that he's hit every single year. So I still view Bake, um, Mike Evans as that. And when you talk about like Baker, he's played well without him. So it's not like he's going to be able, he's not going to be able to get him the football if Godwin's not on the field. Mike Evans is going to be schemed open for that. I think the bigger thing is here, if you have a team that's 500 or below and you are trying to flip Mike Evans, know that there's somebody in the league that values him that way. Mm -hmm. So never come into trade talks thinking, in my opinion, like, hey, I I just got to get rid of him right now. Mike Evans is a talented player. So if you have him on your team and you're looking to trade him, make sure you do get the full value for him, not the injured coming back week 12 value just to save face. Like if you're getting DJ more offers for Mike Evans, I don't think that's fair. If you're getting like back in running back two values for Mike Evans, I don't think that's fair. I think you need to go chase that top 15 value for Mike Evans if you're going to trade him and treat him as an elite asset because, shit, he could be a top 10 guy once he steps back on the field. Yeah, but the pro- the only problem is that, like you said, the DJ Moore, I don't think it's a bad – that's a bad offer if if I'm trying to win right – because it say that's like the only offer you can truly get. I'd rather have DJ Moore – if I'm like below 500 to win right now, like Mike Evans absolutely is not going to help you win right now. I think mean, because he's had the buy. That's really the only reason why. If they, if well, Moore, he's not playing. Buy, he's not playing it. though. So it's three weeks. It's three weeks without a. And you wait, but that's that's a big. That's your third round pick or even second round pick that you're going to be three weeks without. Yeah, you don't but have you're getting, that. You're getting luxury. back in wide receiver two production. You can go find that on waivers half the damn time. You can get what? a Cedric Tillman to replace him. You can get other receivers on a week to week basis. No, that's a pretty that fair. Of, I would say DJ that's a pretty Moore good trade. Production. That's a pretty good trade there. Because the uh, other thing too is that I also you know the the other problem is that we're just assuming Mike Evans is going to come back and be Mike Evans. That is that's that, true. That's a risk. Like he could potentially they're at a higher risk of re-injuring that thing going forward. So he could come back week one, chase that thousand yard season. Like you're seeing saying and re-injure himself. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's also a potential risk where once again, if I'm a team that has to win right now, I need a guy who's actually playing right now compared to a guy who's going to be out. So would you rather have Mike Evans right now? Somebody offered you Jalen Waddle for Mike Evans. Would you take it? If I had to win right now, I would take that. Yes. Mm. Would you say Chris Olave? Yes. If I once again, if I had to win, yeah. If you had to win, would you take Zay Flowers? That one's tough because I don't like the <laughs> Deontay Johnson. Probably not. I just yeah, that that one's really close. Yeah, I think I'm I'm more like it would have to be like a Devontae Smith, uh, Jaden Reed. It would have to be like somebody a, a tier higher, I would say. I just don't like think that you'd be able more. to get those guys, personally. Maybe. Yeah, you'd probably have to get a little creative. You got to have a little, you gotta have a good mouthpiece, Tyler. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able, you gotta be able to I, get yeah. the gap. I mean, I, I like I like the Jalen Waddle one because I think Jalen Waddle will play better. You know, We know Andy's – I'm pretty sure Miami's already had their bye. Yeah, they have. So, so that's another thing to look for too. If a team has had their bye, you can get four games. Well, at least three games now. That's already yeah, been. You don't gotta worry about it. Right. At least three games. Uh speaking of Miami, let's get into to another player who a lot of people were concerned about once Tua went out. That's Devon A. Chan. And Devon A. Chan's value has been up and down all over the place. After week two, people were celebrating and said, This is exactly why we drafted him. And then Tua went out and things changed for Devon A. Chan. 
Um, but since then, we've seen Tua come back now. And so the value has been there again for Devon Achan. And when this offense is moving, it looks like he's a vital component to the offense. Mm-hmm. We did also see Raheem Moser. Like, I know the, one of the big things in week one after Raheem Moser got hurt was like, oh, Devon Achan, he got that goal line carry. So he's going to be used as the red zone back. And then last week we saw, in week eight, we saw uh, Raheem Moser get a goal line opportunity. So I think the biggest question mark is, you know, how much involvement does Raheem Moser have? Like coming off the bye, we've seen him get a little bit more involved. Mike McDaniel over the offseason had talked about him being, you know, the co-starter. We have four starters on this team, Jeff Wilson and and obviously, um, you know, uh, rookie Jalen Wright. So I think my biggest thing with Devon Achan is how high is the ceiling, right? That, that was the reason you drafted him this year, because he could break fantasy, he could have 30 points per game. We've seen it with Tua so far in three games, but we didn't see it without him. Which one are you believing? Because it's a tale of two different Devon H hands at times right now. I mean, definitely with Tua. I, this year with Tua in the lineup, he's averaging over 26 fantasy points per game. Without him in the lineup, seven fantasy points. We go back to last year when he was healthy, Tua is healthy. He's averaging over 19 fantasy points per game with Tua. So as long as two is healthy, like Devon A. Chan, I, I understand like Raheem Moster could be a threat to vulture some touchdowns. But the biggest thing with Devon A. Chan is receiving. Like the dude yes. is a receiver when he's out there playing running back. And that is just so valuable in your four, full point PPR leagues. He's so explosive. In the beginning of the year, kind of had that ankle injury too, which I think was kind of holding him back a little bit. He looked really good, ripped off a 40 yard run r- last week. We just. We know how good the player is, um, and you know obviously he's smaller. He's also at the, a little bit of a higher risk to get hurt, but just a guy that when he's on the field, two is on the field. This is a, a elite, an elite RB one in fantasy football, uh, full point PPR. So he's a guy that I, yeah, if I have him, I mean, man, it looks good. What? Please so, stay healthy. So the, the elite part, because I think that's the, the that's the part that's the hardest thing to gauge right here is how elite is the ceiling. And I think with Devon H. the one thing that I, we know is like, I think the workload is dialed back more than what we saw. Like earlier in the year, there was a game against Buffalo where he had like, yeah, I would say over 20 touches. carries. I think that was like kind of an outlier touches yeah yeah 30 touches yeah so i think that was i think that was kind of an outlier we're probably going to see more of like this 15 to 20 range with a lot of it like you mentioned being in the receiving game he's seeing like six seven catches a game when two is when two is that quarterback so i think the biggest thing i have with devon achan is i understand the ceiling based off of efficiency right i understand the Mm -hmm. ceiling of he can average five to six yards per carry he can you know obviously he'll get six to ten touches in the in the receiving game feels like damn near but yeah. where's the touchdowns? Like, is he going to have any of those three touchdown games? Is he, does he truly have 200 yard potential total yards? Like, I think that's where we're hoping he can break fantasy because when I start to look at the other running backs, when we talk about like elite running backs, I'm not trading Devon H. Han for Saquon, for B. John Robinson, shit, for even Kyron Williams, Derek Henry, I don't know about Joe that. Mixon, Alvin Kamara. I'm not trading Devon H. Han for any of these guys. I don't know. I, I mean, really, I think that. So last week, I mean, he had a 27 points. I mean, what what running back? Okay, I would say the only running back, there's only one running back that truly, probably a couple, but one definitely that I would want over him is right now Derrick Henry. I mean, Derrick Henry's breaking yeah, fantasy Derek kind Henry's of. Crazy. But like the three games with two healthy this year, 23, 29, 27. Who's, who's doing that? Who else is doing that? Brees Hall's not doing that. Bijan Robinson's not doing that. Oh, he's not. The last three oh, games he has. Oh, the last two games. Wow. Last three. He, hey, Devon H. Handel, Devon H. Handel did it for one game. It he's done it Tua. three the games with, here is with Tua. That's why. With Tua healthy, he's had at least six catches with Tua healthy. Yeah, with in Tua every healthy, single one. Game. Also played fucking Jacksonville Buffalo was giving Buffalo, up the, one of the most Atlanta. One of the most they get point Buffalo this week. All season they Arizona. get Buffalo this week. They get the Rams next week. They get Las Vegas. They get New England. Like, this is a great schedule. So uh, I, I think that it's kind of one of these things with you personally. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm gonna take a little shot here at you. Go ahead. That you don't want to get off of this take personally with Devon A. Chan. You, you did not like Devon A. Chan heading into the season. This dude is an elite 
See, elite this is high end RB one. I'm putting more respect on his name than I did even in the preseason. Right? This isn't a take at all. This is a hot the only concern guy. with him is injury. That's okay. It. That should be it. That when he's on the field and two is on the field, this is this is like Christian McCaffrey numbers. The twenty. 27, 29, 23. We're going That's off a three-game sample size. Okay. Three-game sample size. Okay. And last year, when he was healthy, he was also breaking fantasy. This is now two years of when Tua and him are on the field. He's elite. This he is broke an fantasy elite at the guy. beginning of the year. What are you doing in the second half of that year? He was still having 20-point games. This is he what I don't 25. understand. He wasn't, he wasn't top five. Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't year. have a 50-point game. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in the realm of possibilities with him is that if he does get those touchdowns, it's going to be 50 points because the dude is just so dynamic. So personally, I think that he's right up there with, with C or not CMC. Well, I mean, CS seems coming back, but yeah, potentially, but he's right up there with like AK. He's right up there with uh Brees Hall, Bijan. He's right up there with those guys. And so personally, you say up there. I'd rather have, I'd rather, I would say, there's probably one running back. I mean, it's only Derrick Henry, honestly. So that's Derek the only guy right that I would now, rather have. would be like, if you were doing a midseason ranking for the rest of the year, you have Devon A. Chan as your RB2. RB2, RB3. I don't even know. Like, I, probably Bree, maybe Bree. I don't even think I'd rather. I'd rather have Devon A. Chan over Brees Hall. I'd rather that's have him. I don't think it's wild. Like he's that's wild. Too. I think the, the, the floor, the floor is nice. I think the floor is going to be nice. The floor and ceiling basis. is massive. Because the receiving, but I also think he's had some. You talked about the good matchups coming up, so maybe I didn't factor that in as much, like the the good upcoming schedule. But he's had some plush matchups here over the, the, the when the but games that two have played. He's had plus matchups. Like that's the, that's we could also say that that sure. that's part of it too. So I think when I look at like Kyron, I look at Saquon. Oh, I'm sorry, Bijan, yeah, Kyron, Kyron, Kyron. I forgot about. What Kyron. about Saquon? I'd rather have Kyron over him. You'd rather have H and the Saquon. Uh, he's right there with Saquon. That's close. I like I view Jameer him as Gibbs. top five. Like, give me Jameer Gibbs. No, I'd rather have I'd rather have Tavon Nate Chan. Yeah, Gibbs. See, we just I think we're just off. He's right there, but it's like I got him maybe a tier below. I'd say he's level. like uh like mixing right give me mixing. top five. Twenty five carry a game mixing. I'm taking mixing over A Chan. No, A Chan. Give me A Chan. Oh, that's that's wild, bro. That's what. What about Kenneth Walker? You got Kenneth Walker, A Chan. A Chan. I think that's close. I think that's the that's the territory I have. Man. I have H. Devon and Walker is literally territory. a wide receiver playing running back. That's what he is. He reminds me because you, uh, you remember James White. James White used to do this a lot too, but he didn't have the same explosiveness that yeah, Devon yeah. H. Chan has. But he would have the very nice floor of like five to six catches, and it would feel like, damn, you already have a built-in ten points just off the receiving work. In the three games with Tua, he hasn't had under fifty receiving yards. That's for a running back. That is stupid. You know, we yeah. love AK and I love AK. And we're always like, this dude is good for five catches. He's had six catches in every single game with Tua. God damn. That's stupid. Well, I mean, you, <laughs> you did mention that nobody has that. Like Alvin Kamara has that. No, AK is right there with him. But the, the only <laughs> difference is that just a chan's more explosive. So we can have those. I wouldn't be shocked if next game he has a 70-yard like, touchdown. See, and this is why I would take Kamara 100% over a chance because he has the receiving work, but for the most part, he's also going to get more of the goal line work. He has and he's also going to see way more volume. Yeah, and, and that's I would say that's the thing. But but the the only thing I would say with a chan is I don't want him to have that Buffalo game. I don't want him to have the yeah. 29 touches. That's not how – he's built to be in this exactly what he had last week. The 15 to 20 ish range. That's the perfect range where hopefully he doesn't get hurt. He stays hyper efficient, which he is. And the, the ceiling's massive. But I understand if, you know, you wanted Joe Mixon because he's going to see that guaranteed, you know, 25 touches. But like A Chan's just, he's so explosive. And if those numbers stay there with Tua, like, I mean, that's, this is our legit RB1 upside. I don't think he will now, obviously. Right. He can't get there. But rest of the way, potentially, if he stays healthy along with Tua. Uh, you say can't get there. You never know. If, if he has only 50 point games, we might <laughs> True. be talking about True. him. Up it there. could change fast. Yeah. <laughs> things have changed really quickly here in fantasy. And I think that's that's one of the themes I would say of this season is like how quickly things can change. You feel like you're on top of the world. You yeah. feel like everything, you're right about everything. And then the next week we're like, holy shit, what were we talking about? Yeah. I would say one of the, the players that's defined that more so than anything has been like Marvin Harrison this year. 
Yeah. Marvin Harrison has really been the epitome of like, one day we're talking about him as a generational prospect, the next we're all wondering why we drafted him. And then he reminds us, oh shit, this is who he is. And it's like, he's kind of, you know, established himself as this, you know, mid-tier kind of wide receiver too, where some weeks he puts up wide receiver one numbers and looks the part others. Maybe he has a harder matchup. It's just not there for him that week. And now he's, you know, underperforming and we're wondering why we drafted him in the, you know, well, people, not we, but some people yeah. drafted him in the first, first round, second round, right? But we saw like earlier in the year, like the mega spurts, like the, the quarter that he had against the Rams. And then he had the next game right after that. And then a few duds. And it's like, we had another breakout game from him later on this year. He's a tough player to gauge because mm -hmm. the emotional investment is this guy could be a league winner down the stretch. He was a, a top pick that I drafted off of my team. But then the emotional part of that as well is, shit, he's not living up to the hype. Damn it, I see what Brian Thomas and, and Malik Neighbors are doing, you know, rookie wise. And it's tough, I think, to, to kind of gauge that value. For me, I have Marvin Harrison as like uh, kind of that, that, that DJ Moore territory, that wide receiver too, who yeah. can have elite weeks, but will probably have some bad weeks just because he's not, I, I would say this, I don't think he's the main option in the passing game. And I think that was the clear expectation here is that he was going to command 130, 140 targets, be this alpha wide receiver one. I don't think he's the main target in this game. And I think it's Trey McBride. So I think yeah. I have him as more of a wide receiver too. And it is matchup dependent if we see those elite weeks or not. But I do think he could be an elite down the stretch. Yeah, I would say he's like how I would view him going forward is kind of mid wide receiver too. But I do realize or I do recognize and kind of what you said with Trey McBride, he just has a, a stud guy playing with him. And the other thing too is just kind of Kyler. Like Kyler's been very up and down this year in terms of passing. Um, so it's, and I don't know if Kyler can – I think Kyler's very good. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know with, like, the rushing that Kyler also possesses where some of those, you know, some potential receptions and, and passing attempts are going to come out of the offense just because he's a, you know, mobile quarterback that can escape the pocket. Uh, but with Marv, like, I don't think there's any question. I think Marv's an elite talent um, coming into the league. Like, obviously, he still has – uh, he can get better. I just think he was an elite prospect. And I and, and this kind of what you start to see, though, I, I will say this, is that last week, I mean, he played Miami. Miami, I don't know how good they actually are. I don't think that they've had a lot of great quarterback matchups that they played great wide receivers throughout the season. But they haven't had anybody the, that's had to, had to score points on them because two has been hurt. Yeah, so it's just – and I think they played, like, Indianapolis and Tennessee. It just hasn't been, like – great guys that they played it but it was on paper a tough matchup last week and he had a really good game what i will say with marv too that's interesting and you know i i talk about this a lot is just kind of the second half season breakouts for these rookies where you could potentially start to really see him maybe this is the start of it where now he's getting going now you know him and kyler are starting to figure things out so i recognize that there this could be a situation where i say mid wide receiver two but I wouldn't be shocked if for the rest of the season he finishes it kind of as a back end wide receiver one just because he was drafted with the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft. Everybody thought this was an elite wide receiver coming out of the uh, out of college uh, for years now. So I, I recognize that there's a lot of upside. I just don't know if he can really get there with Trey and then also with Kyler. I don't know if if they'll really be able to support him as a back end wide receiver one, but I do think that there's the potential there for him to finish out the season as a back end wide receiver one. I think this is the perfect opportunity. And unfortunately, like I think there might be better days ahead for Marv, but I think this is also the perfect time to sell a Marvin Harrison who had 111 yeah, yards and touchdown. Like the one thing we haven't really seen, like, and we keep alluding to it, but this isn't the Cliff Kingsbury offense of old. And I think for whatever reason we attach that to this Cardinals team, like they, they play a different style of football. Kyler's only thrown over 220 yards twice this entire yeah. year. Marv's only seen over eight targets once this year. Like, it's yeah. not like he's getting force-fed and peppered with targets. They use James Conner in the run game. You talked about Kyler's legs. They'll use Kyler's legs to continue to move the football downfield. They will use these other receivers. You know, Michael Wilson has, has stepped up and had a nice role this year with the team. And obviously, we've seen Trey McBride really command targets at a high level this year. So, I don't know that Marv even really – fully breaks out to like that wide receiver one this season i think we can see it in spurts and i think we will have games like last week where we see him go for over 100 yards and a score but 
I think it'll be tough on a consistency basis, and especially if they can avoid certain matchups. I think they will do that. The good thing is, I think down the stretch they have a pretty nice schedule against like yeah. Carolina and the Rams in in the in the fantasy playoffs. He's got a really good could schedule bode well, down the stretch. but. I think over the next few weeks, you know, you got a tough matchup this week against Jalen Johnson. They got Sauce Gardner the week after that and then a bye. So I kind of just see Marv, like, maybe he'll exploit some of those matchups and be able to play. But he's a player I would sell high on right now just because of the uncertainty. And this is, you know, I think the optimism is, like, you drafted him for the second half of the year. Rookies tend to go off in the second half of the year. Rookie receivers in general tend to peak towards the end of the year. And I think you might be able to get a nice piece out of this, especially in your more casual leagues or your leagues without savvy players. They might see this and think, okay, the breakout is fully here. Whereas I think he's, I think we've talked about it more wide receiver two than he is wide receiver one. I think mm-hmm. your dynasty leagues though, you definitely hold it. You see the talent yeah, that's on the yeah. field. It's just, it, it comes down to like redraft sometimes about being really strategic when you sell players. And to me, after like a bunch of bad weeks and then finally a 20 point week, you're like, to me, this seems like the right time to sell him. So who would you sell him for? Like, would you rather have him or Devontae Smith? Give me Devontae Smith. Him or Devontae Adams? I would probably go Devontae Adams. What about him or Garrett Wilson? Oh, Garrett Wilson, 100%. Garrett Wilson, he's He a looks dog, good. Bro. He's a Dude, dog. He's, he's tough. He's um, I guess the, I, I would kind of view him way. as... You're going the wrong way. Marv, I'm going this way with Marv. Well, no, no. I, I think that Marv is kind of, I would say kind of like a little bit below those guys. I would say Marv is more. Do you like Terry McLaurin-esque to me? I would rather even have Terry over some of those exactly. guys. That, like, so I think like he's Jaylen kind of. Waddle, yeah, I would say he's kind of like down towards that range where like, I probably even rather have George Pickens over him. Although yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to overreact to like the mid. I don't know. I think that there's definitely a lot of upside with Marv. I do. I still think that, and especially like you said, after the buy, I mean, after the buy, you get Seattle, you get Minnesota, which Minnesota, good defense, but my God, are they getting killed by wide receivers? Yeah. You get Seattle again, you get New England, you get Carolina, Rams. Like that's a really good second half of the season schedule. But once again, I just, I don't know if Kyler can like support these two high end guys for the rest of the way. It's kind of my. The biggest it, problem is if it was like Stroud. I think if it was like a, a quarterback, like a more pocket passing quarterback, yes, hell yeah, I'd be in all in on that. But I don't know if Kyler can truly support both of them high end numbers. At some point in his career, we are going to see that. It's just oh, his yeah, rookie year sure. in this. It could offense, be. It could be down the stretch. We'll see. It, and I think consistency is the biggest thing for him. It's can he get to the levels where we can trust him on a week to week basis? And not the every wide receiver one up. is like that, but we need to see some weeks where we're getting like 10, 12 targets. Like, yeah, we need more of those. So you'd rather have Malik neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm here. there. I'm there. It sucks, man, because you, you get these receivers and it's like, you know, in our heads, I think we, we see them as elite on the field, but then in fantasy, it's a completely different story. And I'm kind of getting the sense of that out of these Bears receivers too. You know, we go to the Bears and you see DJ Moore and we're like, man, you know, last year he was a top six guy. And, you know, I, I never really have DJ Moore value that. I've always kind of felt he's been an up and down guy, but he's in a good situation here in this Bears offense where he's the lead receiver. They added Keenan Allen, and and you know we were thinking like, man, Keenan would be a good addition to this team. Some people didn't think that he's been injured, but at times Keenan Allen has looked the part, and it's really tough to judge not just those two, but Romo Dunze as well. Like we get these three receivers, and we get the up and down nature that comes with another rookie and Caleb Williams, and it really is tough, I would say, to judge these guys. And when we're looking at trades like DJ Moore. Uh, you know, I, I have him as like a wide receiver too, but there's weeks where he looks like a one and there's weeks where he looks like a three or a four. And it's like, he's a tough player for me to gauge. I have him as a back end wide receiver too. And I think it's just for the nature of his inconsistency. Are you on board with that? Or do you have him a little bit higher or lower? I'd say a little bit higher. And the reason why is you also look at his schedule. I mean, his schedules, it's really good. I mean, you get Minnesota twice, you get Detroit twice, which both those teams, I, I get it, kind of good defenses, but secondary is not very good. You get uh, New England, so Arizona. So I think that there's some really good matchups here. And one thing that kind of gives me f- hope was before the bye, he was pretty good. Uh, I mean, you had the one game, 27 points, 16, 11, 11. Like, it's, it's okay, but it's encouraging. What's also encouraging are the targets. Now, I know last game, 
it was just dreadful. Like that offense was just dreadful. Yeah. Uh, last week, you would think so, against the commander, the commanders have stepped up. I think the commanders are honestly, yeah, uh, are are getting to be a. I know people say the commanders are horrible defense. Oh, they're a good defense. Now. They're getting to be a very good defense. Dan Quinn is doing a great job. So I don't think that people realize that though, because I was actually talking to uh, my brother-in-law yesterday. Yo, shout out. And he was saying how bad that defense is. And I didn't want to correct him or anything because I hate doing that kind of stuff because <laughs> it's, you know, what I do. Yeah. But I'm like, their defense has been pretty good. They yeah. have really has not. It's not like last year. So, yeah. I And I also have faith that Caleb, he was playing really well before the bye too. And, and then last week, you know, was really rough for him. Down the stretch, though, he played much better. And I think going forward Caleb will get even better and better and better and kind of the guy that he was prior to the buy so I like DJ Moore I think that he's a solid like wide receiver two, like mid wide receiver two, um going forward and he's somebody that personally I would be actively trying to buy as well because he's already had his buy and I think as the season progresses he'll get he'll have some of those big games so I like yeah DJ. we know we know like DJ Moore that's the one thing about him is he'll go off for that 30 point game every now and then but it's like I think the in-between games are a little bit different, whereas where it was Justin Fields and him, it was like he was the only receiver yeah. on his team. And now you throw in a little bit more of the inconsistency we talked about with Caleb, you know, who looked, like you said, he looks way better But right before the bye. He was, I mean, throwing 300-yard games every now yeah. and then. But I think when you have a guy like Keenan Allen who also can command targets, you also have Roma Dunze who – play you know he's been up and down as a rookie as well but then Cole Komet as well you have DeAndre Swift who's involved in it feels like this team doesn't really lean into their receivers they kind of lean into whatever matchup they are or just the way that Caleb's playing for the day so uh, that's the only concern I have about DJ Moore here who I view as more of like a mid-tier maybe you call him mid wide receiver two I think based off the strength of the name but I think he's more of a back-end wide receiver two but I would be actively trying to trade for him Coming off of two, you know, he had, he had the game right before the bye was subpar, had a game, you know, had the bye. And then last week, obviously, against Washington, we talked about it's getting better. It didn't have the game that a lot of people wanted. I think this is the time to go get DJ Moore, but I would not pay wide receiver two price tag. I would be trying to get him and find out, does that owner that have him, do they view him as a wide receiver three? Are they willing to move off him off the bad game? And I would yeah. really be strategic about how I approach it because I wouldn't want to overpay and have him be my wide receiver two. I would want to set my playoff roster up so that he was my wide receiver three or flex. And I think if I could do that and sell one of these high, these names that have been playing well, um, maybe a guy that's in a different situation now, like a Zay Flowers and Cedric Tillman combo, you try to pair that up to go get a DJ Moore. You're looking something like that, where maybe it's a player you got for free that has expiring value. You got Kareem Hunt. So maybe you're pairing up Kareem Hunt with, um, you know, another receiver and you're trying to go get a DJ Moore. Uh, maybe Calvin Ridley, who's been playing better as of late. You pair that up with Kareem Hunt. Now you're elevating your floor for the fantasy playoffs, and this is a guy who already had his buy. So I would be active in trying to get DJ Moore, and especially as you mentioned, some plus matchups along the way. I wouldn't give up too much, but he is a player that I would be going for in trades. What about Keenan Allen? Because I, 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 you know me, man. I, I like the old receivers. I, I value the old guys a little bit more than normal. But he, he's kind of, you know, he's been up and down because of the injuries this year. We know that with Keenan, he's been banged up in the past. Mm -hmm. But there's been games like he's had, you know, the 12 target game and he's had the two touchdown game, like things we can lean into as fantasy managers that say there's a little bit of optimism here. He does carry a little bit of the same inconsistency that DJ Moore has. But I think Keenan Allen the rest of the way can still be like a wide receiver three. Am I crazy? No, I, I just I don't know. I, I don't like it just because he's an older player. You know me. I don't really like the other <laughs> We're like players. the opposite on that. But uh, the other problem is that I just don't view him as like, it, you're going to have to get a lot of targets, right? Because he's a, he's a closer, a low A dot kind of guy. So he's going to have to see a lot of targets. And like you said earlier, it's just that there's a lot of mouths to feed. A lot of good players in this offense where I know early in the season, he had the 11, 12 target game. But I just don't see him seeing that kind of stuff going forward. I think that he'll see a decent amount of targets, but you're going to have to really get the touchdown because it's not going to be down the field like DJ Moore's down the field kind of guy can have, you know, a, a 50 yard touchdown catch because that's in his arsenal where I just, I don't think Keenan can anymore. I don't think he's that kind of player. And I don't think that they want him to be that kind of player. He's just kind of the safety valve. So I, I think that he can be a wide receiver three, but he's not somebody that, 
I don't even know if people would really be interested. Um, but yeah, I w if I had him, maybe I pair him up with somebody else and try to get him off my team for a, a guy like DJ Moore, something like that. Uh, Jalen Waddle that offers that, in my opinion, greater uh, variance. I don't know if I'm going to get a dud week, but it could also be a 20 plus point week. So right. I'd rather take a guy like that um, than keenan going forward yeah i think we haven't seen keenan even fully healthy until this last week this is the first yeah. time he played like a good majority of the snaps he got hurt you know he came off the field in week one and then he always obviously was coming off of the injury too um earlier when he first came back i just think keenan is one of those players that like might surprise us here down the stretch um and we talked about like the matchups one of them was against minnesota and a lot of the yardage that they give up uh, it, the reason why they're a bad team against wide receivers is two wide receivers out of the slot and so i think that he might have an opportunity there to kind of carve up some of the slot stuff especially as the weather gets colder here in chicago and they're not going to be able to push the ball downfield as much as they want there might be some potential here. I wouldn't give up nothing crazy for, for and I would throw out some offers because the person that has them probably wants to keep them on the bench right now, whoever has mm -hmm. Keenan Allen. So I think if I was looking and maybe you were trying to get DJ Moore and whoever has him wasn't really like going off of him, I think overall for these Bears receivers, I would be looking to find one of these guys, even if it's like Romo Dunze on the back end or yeah. if he's on waivers in your thinner leagues, like I would just be paying attention to this Bears situation because I think it will get better. I think Caleb will get wrong. better. I think that they've already had their buy. So in our heads, we kind of think like, oh, they're not producing as well. But I think over time, we're going to see one of these Bears receivers start to emerge here as the season goes on. Another team that has a receiver that, uh, you know, I didn't buy into fully this offseason. I'm still not fully bought in. But a lot of people are. A lot of people like this young lad. Lad McConkey. We've heard he looks like Steve Smith out there. He plays the same <laughs> type of way. Had a really good game last week. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the, the main thing here is that we're seeing Justin Herbert look a little healthier than he was mm -hmm. to start the year. But a true breakout game for Lad McConkey last week, who had a long touchdown, two touchdowns last week, had his first 100-yard game of the season. Are you fully buying in that Lad is like at wide receiver three territory? Because to me, it felt like a good game, more so than like I can fully trust Lad in my starting lineup. Yeah, I like Lad a lot. Um, Lad's been a guy that's been in my videos uh, for a while now as a buy low candidate just because everything's been there where I, I'm a big believer in target share. So if you're seeing targets, you're earning targets at a high rate, you're a good football player. And that's what he's been doing all season long. Uh, and, and like you said, Justin Herbert has not looked healthy. And we know who Justin Herbert is. Justin Herbert's a stud. This is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He can sling the rock. And the other problem too is kind of this offense has been they've they've wanted to run the football and I think you know problem is that it just it's a new offense they don't have a whole lot of very good wide receivers but I do think Lad's a good wide receiver I think he's starting to prove that and I think that down the stretch once again rookie wide receivers break out and I think this is the beginning of a breakout do I think he's going to finish as a wide receiver one down the stretch probably not but I do think that he could potentially finish as a, a wide receiver two so if I could get him for wide receiver three numbers. Absolutely. Lad receiver too. Lad McConkey. There's no way. No he way. He just possible. had a 30 point week. What are you talking about? No That's, way. I, I get that he had a 30 point week, but that was also an outlier. Like he's playing with just, an elite quarterback and he's the number one target on his team and he's earning targets at a high rate. He's there, so you have him in like DJ Moore and Marv territory? Because that's what we're talking about, like wide receiver twos. That's that's the I, kind I would of level say we're talking I would about. say, well, I think that DJ Moore and Marv are more like mid. I would say it's more back end. So I would say that's kind of like Jalen Waddle esque range. Yes, I would say. See, like that's, that. a, that's a little high for me because I think that this offense is predicated on the run. We've known that. Like, obviously, the Greg Roman, Jim Harbaugh era, we know that this is predicated on the run. They also were missing, like, Quentin Johnson, who earlier in the year was commanding probably, what, five to six targets a game. So Ass, I could yeah. see that coming back. But the thing is, we saw for the first time, like, really Justin Herbert stretch that thing downfield for Lab McConkey. What was it? 60 yard, 50 yard reception? I don't yeah, know exactly how many I, yards it was, know. but yeah. um, that's, I think that kind of inflates the numbers a little bit and it makes it a 30 point game in essence, but like, that's not the player who Lab McConkey is. And I think this is one of those, this is one of those times where the numbers look at us and we're like, okay, like I look at this as a sell high opportunity. And I think mm -hmm. that lad is a player I'd, buy high. I'd be looking to move like instantly. I would, I would buy high. If you offer me 
so you're saying wide receiver three. You just said Keenan Allen's a wide receiver three. You'd rather have Keenan Allen over Lad? Yeah. I don't I'd even have Keenan over Lad. What? I'd rather have Keenan. All right. If I'm in any leagues I'd with you Keenan and you send me that, that's an auto I will, except I will send you that shit in an instant. Oh, hell yeah. Give me Lad. I, I, I really do. Have, I think. Would you rather have Tank Dell or Lad? I'd rather have Tank. I think Tank will be very good down the stretch. Like would you last night was very encouraging. Chris Olave or Lad? Chris Olave. We got Chris Olave. Brian close, Thomas though. or Lad? I've Brian Thomas, I think, is a high end wide receiver too. All Brian right, Thomas we, is way up there. What about what about Zay Flowers? Rather have Zay I'd Flowers rather have Lad. Lad? Lad? I think the DJ Damn. really hurts Zay Flowers a lot, honestly. I, I would I'll say guys him. like I'll say guys like I, I really think that McConkey's right there with like once again, I I, I say Jalen Waddle. Um, I'd rather have, I, I think he's close to DJ Moore just because I trust, I trust Justin Herbert more than I trust Caleb right now. And there's not mouse to feed in that offense where I think that lad down the stretch can earn more, more targets because I think he's the best wide receiver in that offense. Those I just think other... lads had a couple good games. Honestly, I think, I think he's had start. a couple good games. This is the start of it. And, and like we said, Justin Herbert was it week one that he had that or week two he had that high ankle sprain. That was very it was like early. Week two, in yeah, season. it was like week two. So he just has not been right, and I think this now he's starting to look the part. Lad will get going. Uh, so I have faith there. I think it was. I think it was a good game for him. I think Quentin Johnston comes back to this offense, and we see. What him about use... JMO? Him or JMO? Oh, JMO, easy. Oh, lad, easy. I think you deal. I think you deal yeah. with the up and down with JMO, but it's the same type of up. JMO is upside. who we thought he was. He is no, who we thought he was. Who? And that's an ass wide receiver. That's a what wide receiver? Ass. <laughs> bum. Certified I think, I bum. J-Mo's up in, I'd rather have J-Mo than Lad. Lad, I mean, what's Lad done? Outside of like, what, a 30-point game last week? What has Lad really done all season long? He hasn't uh, done He hasn't done shit. Herbert's been hurt in this offense. I think this is the beginning of things. I, right In fantasy football, you got to go with the intuition, I gotta right? I got to some more trades, bro. That's intuition, I, this is the beginning of deals. it. Him and Tank Dell. Woo, they're gonna finish strong, baby. Finish strong. <laughs> Tank Dell's a stud. What about Quinn Johnson? Because this was a player yeah. who on his team, you know, you shaking your head, but on this team, he yeah. was he was looking the part early on and had you know he had a couple games with touchdowns, and you know, he was playing more snaps than lad early on. He dealt with the with the injury, the ankle injury. So I don't know if he's on I think he's on track to play this. I don't know if he actually sees the field this week, but I think he's on track to play this I week. I thought he was I, like, returning. I, I don't think know. They're yeah. they're going to alternate weeks where they look the part, and I know I don't think you agree with me at all with that. But no. I can see Quentin Johnson having like nice flex appeal as the season goes on. No, I I I mean maybe the the problem with Quentin Johnson is one game on the season over forty or yeah over fifty receiving yards. The he was just catching touchdowns. So I I like personally I. I don't. Yeah, he's gonna play this over, week. How many games does Lad have over fifty yards? Let's see. What one, two? I don't Same, even know. Probably I, very I, similar to Quinn Johnson. Can't even see. Hold on. I know Lad. I know he's got one in the bag with last week. But yeah, he's got two. Two. Okay. <laughs> so he's got two. Quinn Johnson got one. <laughs> but he has a hundred yards. Uh, this is the beginning. Yeah, he does got a hundred yard game. I uh, no, I I think with QJ, <laughs> like the problem is with QJ, and I, honestly, I didn't even really like Lad that much, to be honest with you. But uh, I did not like QJ at all coming out of the coming pre-draft into the process. Season? Well, just in the in drafts, I did like I'm saying rookie drafts, like and, and that's kind of what I always revert to Gosh. with these younger wide receivers. I did not like QJ whatsoever. I mean, you had guys. Steve Smith did not like QJ well whatsoever. Uh, a lot of guys did not, and like I just think receivers. that's he hates on big receivers. Well, and QJ is just five, kind five, of a QJ is just not like I don't know. He's not the kind of guy that. He has a lot of I don't know, but anyways, he just doesn't earn targets at a high rate. I don't I don't have a whole lot of faith now. I think Lad will be the number one target going forward. I think he's I think he's the number one target. I just think there's going to be weeks where they alternate, and I, it's kind of reminds me of like a Keenan Allen and DJ Moore type relationship at a much lesser scale, <laughs> at a much lesser scale. Yeah. But where one guy might see some looks uh, one game, another sees looks the other game. Um. Situation that is improving right now for the New Orleans Saints, Tyler. Um, they're getting their quarterback back, and that's Derek Carr. And Derek Carr coming back does wonders for this entire offense, especially 
a player who uh, has struggled and that was drafted. And I think you and I talked about potentially avoiding him in the second round. And that's Chris Olave who was drafted. I mean, he was being drafted as like a top 12 to 15 receiver. He's been a massive disappointment this year. Mm -hmm. He's, he's been, he's struggled right now to stay healthy and even stay on the field. And it's one of those things where sometimes the quarterback makes a big difference, but I think the situation also makes a big difference. Like he looked better yeah. last week, obviously with Spencer Rattler getting benched, Shake Hainer coming in, but with Derek Carr, he's going to be a completely different receiver. Mm -hmm. Are you buying Chris Olave? Because it seems like after everything that's happened this year, there might be a silver lining here for him. Yeah. I, I would have been buying weeks ago personally with Chris Olave because I don't think there's any question that Chris Olave is a good wide receiver he's he's very good um and people were kind of hating on him even when Rashid Shahid was uh healthy but like you you go back and look at it week one I mean they completely blow out Carolina they even blow out Dallas the next week but he puts up three games of 80 plus receiving yards in, in three straight weeks right Dallas Philly Atlanta and then I think Derek Carr gets hurt against Kansas City yeah, I'm pretty sure he gets hurt against Kansas City. And then he just kind of falls off and last week has 100 uh, receiving yards last week. And now with Rashid, Rashid Shahid, I mean, we've already known this, but with him out for season, I just think this consolidates the targets so much for Chris Olave, for a guy like Alvin Kamara going forward. I don't like Derek Carr. I don't think he's that great, but he's better than what they've been playing with right now. And I just think this is very good for Chris Olave where – He's another guy. I mean, I keep kind of saying it, but like wide receiver two ish range, I would say back in wide receiver two kind of, uh, you know, same with Lyle McConkey, but a guy that's been proven, we know that he's good. So it's not just one good game. I think that he can have a lot of good games. So he's somebody that I would also be actively trying to, I'd rather have him over lad, uh, yes. but another guy that I, I think going forward has quite a bit of upside. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say wide receiver one numbers. I don't think that he can be there, but you know, solid wide receiver two numbers the rest of the way. The hard part with Olave is that whoever has Olave is probably thinking like he's going to be back to wide receiver one. Like I think that's yeah. I don't think that too. you could yeah. He's a tough player probably to get, and I wouldn't have recommended getting him because who knew what the season he, was going. to I would have said you the missed the team. opportunity. I think he became, and I said this, you know, when the video Rashid Shahid once he got hurt. He became the buy. He was an absolute buy kind of guy. I think. I think especially once it's it well, especially now that we know Derek Carr is back. It makes things easier to pallet. Like seeing him on the field, it was tough once he got that concussion. But I did. I think you know you're right because you talked about how like people were hating on him with Shahid. It was like I'm gonna be honest. Shahid was the better receiver. I think he's still he's still rated like Shahid's still rated as like a top thirty receiver somehow. Yeah, but I mean, uh, he was gonna catch in the big. But Olave wasn't – the thing is, Olave wasn't bad when Shahid was like, – Nobody said – I don't think he's bad. I think it was just who was performing, who was outperforming. Yeah, exactly. I think they both had their times. Uh, yeah. And Olave is a receiver who, like, I think we know what he is when he's the main target. It looks exactly like how it did last season where he's going to be a top 15 to 20-ish guy. Mm -hmm. We'll probably not see huge volume, but we'll have opportunities deep. He's going to have, you know, those 100-yard games. He'll probably not – probably have four or five touchdowns on the yeah. season. Somewhere That'll be the biggest catches. problem. Well, just the, that, that's the main thing with him. that's just, wide receiver two numbers. He doesn't have the upside. So, but yeah. I think if you can trade for him right now as a wide receiver three or whoever is kind of panicking, like, and doesn't yeah. have him in that range, like you said, I would use Marv right now to go get a lot in another player. And I think that's very attainable right now. I, I think the biggest problem, like you said, will just be the manager, even like your casual managers, like they drafted them high. They liked them. They've held on to them. The situation is changing for better. I just, he'll, he'd be a player that just will be hard to acquire. It'll be hard to acquire him right now. I think you could get crafty though, because if you try to just go get them straight. I, well, what about you, this? If you try to go get them straight, I think you would have an issue. Like, I think if you were just like, absolutely, these two players for one. But I think or, if you can put him in a deal, in a three for two type deal or a three for three type deal, I think it would be easier for the for whoever has him to be like, shit, maybe I'll move off of him. I I would say kind of the flip side, this could potentially be a good sell high opportunity as well, where he's a wide receiver too. But I also think that there's some other players that maybe aren't universally recognized as solid wide receiver twos going forward that you could piece in Alave with the name Olave and then another piece and get like a 
Give me an example of what you're thinking. Like, give me an example. So, so like, I would say, I, I think that you could probably, like, I think majority of people, especially with how he's been playing, 100% want Chris Olave over a guy like Jaden, Jalen Waddle, right? I would say people would absolutely do that. So you could potentially get, like, Jalen Waddle. I know this is disgusting. I know this is disgusting, but hear me out. You get Jalen Waddle, who could potentially be as good as Chris Olave down the stretch, maybe, you know, Tua starts playing better. And you could probably get like an Alexander Madison, which I know that sounds disgusting, but Alexander Madison is a 70%, you know, opportunity share kind of guy that could be a back in RB2 for the rest of the way. And you're not, honestly, it's, I wouldn't be shocked if Jalen Waddle and, and Chris Olave at the end of the season for the rest of the season finish right next to each other in total points. I, I would be very shocked at that. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be shocked at that. I think that, I think Jalen Waddle's too inconsistent right now. I think Jalen, was, but I, Jalen Waddle's been a stud when he's played. We know what Jalen Waddle is. We've seen him long enough. Yeah. This is like a bad little stretch of games he's gone through. Who's to say next week against Buffalo when everybody's going to sit him, he doesn't have a hundred yards and a touchdown catch like that? I think we can get that happen. out of Olave this week easily. Easy, exactly. Easy, exactly. No, but I think that's a much 100%. easier path than than Jalen Waddle. I don't. But Jalen Waddle's Chris Olave and Jalen Waddle literally have been the same player last year they were the same player yeah but and a lot of what nothing's uh, changed but waddle a lot of what waddle no they weren't the same player last year waddle was was outside of the top 20 i want to say chris olave was in the top 20 last year yeah I'll and i also that. want to say that when waddle had his best games it was when like tyreek missed that two game stretch and i think he inflated his numbers during that time he had like 200 yard games back to back towards the end of the year okay when, so Jalen waddle last year averaged 14.2 fantasy points per game okay 14.2 Chris Olave last year. Hold on, it has to load. Hurry up. Probably, probably 16, 17. I'll say he averaged 15, probably. That sounds about right, too. He averaged last year, he averaged 14.5. 14. Literally 5. the same player. And I know it's disgusting, and people will look at Alexander Madison and say, ew, gross. But this is a workhorse running back. And this is what I'm saying. Like, you're essentially getting two of the same players in the in the community is going to be way higher on Chris Olave than Jalen Waddle. And guess what? Jalen Waddle's already had his bye. So you're getting a player that you don't even have to worry about the bye week going forward anymore. His quarterback's being healthy. He's been disappointing this season because his quarterback's been hurt. And then you get another workhorse running back on top of that, who I know people are not going to like, but he's a workhorse running back. We know how right. valuable these guys are, especially down the stretch where I just think it's kind of like a... I go aim higher. Like that? I, if, if, that's a, if that's a deal for Chris Olave, uh, sure. I'm, I, sending I think that, that could, I'm sending that nine times out of ten. You I know? think that so, you could aim a little bit. But I think, I think that if you're going to start to aim higher is when you're going to have to do now. Now you need to do a two-for-one kind of deal where I think that this is a great case for a guy that you could get a two for one for a guy like that. I think if you put in, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if you're going to move for Olave, it's got to be like a guy, like I think you should use one of your, the assets that kind of came to you for free. Like a DeAndre Hopkins, if you pick them up, plus another stud running, like a running back, J.K. Dobbins. You throw J.K. Dobbins and DeAndre Hopkins in a deal. I don't know if the Olave person is like doing Chris that. Olave, Depends you're on. saying? Yeah, for Chris Olave, like that's the kind of deal I'm doing, or a Cedric Tillman and maybe like a Chase Brown. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to use pieces that like don't really that in deals like that where I'm getting a player who probably is more a wide receiver three on my team than wide receiver two. I'm trying to give up pieces and like keep Jalen Waddle. So I'm trying to give up pieces that like are fringe players on my bench, but then I look at my opponents and they're like, "Ooh, I could start one of those guys for sure." One of those guys could be in my starting lineup. And I think like Chase Brown's a type of piece that I would use in a deal like that. Um, Tyrone Tracy, I would probably use him like maybe a straight one-to-one -one deal to go get Chris Olave, things like that. Like that's how I play the game is I kind of like up my floor a little bit, even if I give somebody a little bit more upside. Like, do you, well, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting thing too. Like for you, are you willing to give up like, the, a similar type of player and a little bit more because I've heard a lot of people like I don't want to lose a deal I don't want to lose a fantasy deal I don't want to lose a trade deal you know I, I want to win my deal I got to get the best player there's a lot of trade talk like that when you go into trades are you hoping like you win the deal or are you hoping that you make the other both teams better like what's your goal when you walk into a trade because for me I'm all about if I can make you better and make myself better I just want to have the best possible team going into the fantasy playoffs that's what I care about um well just real quick before i i say that i i always kind of want to win the trade but it's it's also just like how you look at it i don't want to 
like I think that there too many people just try to rip off other people, right? Yes. They try to just like severely blatantly. yeah blatantly try to rip off and i think that there's sometimes that you could be view as long as you think that you you're making out on the side of the trade that helps better your team even if it betters the other team like ideally it's a trade that benefits both of you guys right and that's a, a trade that's going to get accepted way more than trying to rip off another guy and hopefully he doesn't see it that way just like uh, trades that are going to help out both teams so i i don't want to say that like obviously i want to win the trade but there could be times where it could be looked at as like I'm losing the trade, but in my mind, I'm I'm getting the player that I want. Yep. So like, I that's kind of how I would say it. But the other thing too, like it kind of didn't like my trade there. I think that people are underestimating Alexander Madison. We are not diving into, we are not. Listen, into the past Alexander. three weeks, 17 we points, 15 Madison. points. Those are two top 20 finishes at the running back position. 17, 15 points, and then a, a 10 point week last week. I, I think that people are hating on this guy a little bit too much. I and this is the problem is that people think Alexander Madison, ew. Okay, give me Alexander Madison. I'll gladly take that guy in my team because that's a rock solid RB2 because of the volume. It's like Tyrone Tracy. Now we see Tyrone Tracy blowing up. It's like that's been there. Like this is a a workhorse running back. These are the this, guys that you we want. We are not side topicking in Alexander Madison. Alexander Madison. Okay. If you're out there last week, and you're like, ew, touchdowns. Alexander Madison, go get Alexander Madison. No, go get him. No, go no, get him right now. This is a guy that you want. You do not five, three Madison. last three games, five, three, five receptions. That is great usage. Excellent. Excellent for a running back. Are you kidding me? We That's a guy you want. want Alexander Madison. If you're watching this, I'm begging you to not get That's Alexander great. Madison. You got him on your teams. Trade me him. I'll take him. I'll go pick his ass up. Just to, I'm sure he's on waivers in our league. I'll available. go pick his ass up to go give to yeah, go. I'll do it. There, there's questions if he's even the starter still. He, oh my god, he he's the starter. Like what are you talking 10 about? Yards rushing last week on 15 carries. He had five what catches. He... I don't give a shit about that. Oh my god, he played 67 percent of the snaps last week. It was 70. percent This is a workhorse running. He had 14 total touches the week prior. 23. This is a workhorse running no back. No chance. I'm he had seven Alex last week. Oh seven red zone touches. <laughs> He's, seven red zone somebody, touches for somebody who talks about efficiency like you sure ain't talking about that with alexander madison his not when it comes 2. to rb2 yards RB2. per carry 2.3 one yard per carry that. last week what is what that i share is he's a workhorse running back give me that kind of guy absolutely i'm cool oh, yeah madison, bro. i'll let you know what i'm gonna go see if i have any i'm gonna go try to acquire him before you do and then i'm gonna send him to you as an rb2 now <laughs> all right <That's> do it <laughs> do it Man, I wanted to get in some trade talk there. We'll do that a little bit later, though. But uh, any any party thoughts, man, before we head into this week, man? Because we this is this is a pivotal week for a lot of teams. Yeah, uh, and there's I, I don't know what exactly Puka Nakua got hurt yesterday. I don't know. Yeah, if they that said was... Puka Nakua. He, they don't know if he's going to play this week, but it's important to watch. We also got that uh, T Higgins is doubtful for the game this week. So obviously have another option there. I, I'm not really starting none of the other options for the Bengals outside of a. Uh, jamar chase and then jonathan brooks is not expected to play this week as well so jonathan brooks he is back. he officially done for season then or did jonathan they activate brooks? him no they'll probably activate him just not play him and not we'll play be him because he has to be activated this week i'm pretty sure yes this was the last week of his 21 he got two full practices in so it sounds like it's close but it said he's unlikely to play because i think tj hawkinson did the same thing last week where they had to activate him last week and they did and then they but did he, and yes. just didn't play him Okay. So they'll probably. Well, they'll that's probably good that uh, as long as he gets activated, that's good. I don't that'd know. Kind of interesting if they don't activate him. That'd be weird. Well, and he's out for season. I mean, I feel like that kind of makes sense, though. Like, why even give? What are you, What are you playing for? Because you guys, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't play him at all. I would play him just to see what you have. But he's, him. like, because you go yeah, next sure. Year. But he's also, a, I, I guess, but he's a running back, so it's like. You're just putting extra mileage on him that's not necessary. Like you're not yeah, you gonna go to the playoffs got, or anything. So yeah, I next, but you got Chuba, you got Chuba, and then he plays well next year, or he plays well towards the end of this year. I don't know if he's if he's a free agent. He, I, he might be a pennant because he's been on that team for a while. He's yeah, probably is a penny. Free agent. But yeah, if he's, he's not, you got question agent. marks going into next year now. Like yeah, I just think that you kind of use both of them and and then you know, as the season progresses, start to give 
uh, Jonathan Brooks a little bit more. But there's I, I don't no know. Way. There's no way they bench him for the, or not bench him, but just not activate. Not activate there's him. No, way. no I, I I think that I, I mean, God, how many games have they won? One. They're yeah, terrible. I think they got one win. Two, they, maybe they're two? terrible. I don't know what the point is of well, even bringing them back at this pick, point. So, and Bryce is back now. I don't know. I just think you got to see what you have with both of them on the field together. Like, that's fair, and I, I think that's fair. I, I I do think that if you think he's a stud and you're sitting there at practice and you're like, my God, this guy's good. I mean, I wouldn't even bring him back though. Like, what the hell's the point? How would you do Jonathan again? Brooks? You think you think he still has? I know you were pretty high on him, like to, yeah, to start the year. Obviously, I don't know if that's. I don't know where your take is with him right now, but I I think that. It's one of those things where it looks like a platoon unless he just absolutely outplays Chuba, who's so, playing really well. And they got the trade deadline coming up next week, too. But yeah, and, which they well, uh, Miles Sanders also been involved. I don't know who the hell wants Miles Sanders, yeah. but like depth, it, depth piece. Yeah, depth, true. Um, I, it could be a, a situation where they do just start to unload some of these guys. And maybe, you know, Chuba has Chuba's been playing pretty well. So maybe he is a guy that they could potentially move. Um, so I'll, I'll say this is that. I'm sure you've had takes like this where like you're saying a take, but you're also kind of like your intuitions, like, All right, I got to get off of this take because I know it's not going to be a good take, but then you're like, I'm too deep in this thing yeah. that I got to keep going with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Jonathan Brooks for me was always kind of that take because early in the summer, I did not like Jonathan Brooks. And I even wrote about it in my draft guide where yeah. if he's ruled out for the season and he goes on IR, I want nothing to do with it. But then I kind of like, talked myself into this a little bit and then i just was like well i'm too deep in this i gotta stick with this take now when really the logical thing was to kind of get out i don't like jonathan brooks right now personally and i do have him in quite a bit of leagues just because it's a bad football team uh, one one hope was kind of like this team wouldn't be as bad as they are but they are really bad and especially yeah. with bryce young maybe they go back to andy dalton which i, I think that gives Jonathan Brooks a little bit more value because I think Andy Dolan's just way better than Bryce Young right now. But it's kind of a situation where it's like Carolina, why? Like just let Bryce Young play it out and yeah, you know, we'll see what I, happens. I, I was kind of the opposite where like I just didn't like Jonathan Brooks at all because of the price. I, I think he'll be a good football player, but it was just like you had to take him at like RB2 type, RB3 type range. And I was like, eh, yeah. I'd rather just have somebody else. But the more like the season goes on, I kind of think like after the bye is one of those things where you have to see what you have in a young football team. Like Dave Canales is as a coach, you don't always get the same, you know, length of time as a quarterback does or a running back yeah. does. Like your nays are might be numbered next I mean, season. He could you be know? out next year. I don't yeah, want to say they won't so, fire him this year. I don't think they'd give him another year, but it could be it, done. It's like I think year. at least they give him another year to see what they have because they just brought him in. But like I think that with Brooks, you got to see, like, what kind of back is he? Is he a back that we can trust? Do we need to go get somebody this offseason? Yeah. So I think that, like, we might see a changing of the guard here, but I think the timing of it is the biggest question. Is it after their bye in week – I think they got to bye week 11 or week 12. Is it right after the bye do we see a changing of the guard? Is it for the last one game of the year? Is it for the last four games of the year? I think at some point here we're going to see this platoon, probably platoon here, and then it's going to change, and it's going to mm. catch all of us off guard. I just don't think any of us, me, you, anybody sitting, Dave Canales, none of us knows what week that's going to be, but it might be a week during the fantasy playoffs, and we're talking about this dude as like a high-end RB2. At that and point. Chuba Hubbard is officially a – uh, he's a free agent next year. Free agent, yeah. They're going to yeah. see. They, they're going to want to see what they have out of, out of Brooks then. Yeah. That was – Kyron was my guy. Kyron was my guy where I was I, – I, the longer it was going, I was like, damn, I'm being a little hard on him right now. And I started moving him <laughs> up a little bit because I, I was, you know. And I yeah, you always had game. those – you always have those things. And I there's been plenty of takes like uh, Alvin Kamara this year, right? Like to yeah. me, the intuition was just like he'll be good. I know like because he – but then like the – you're I, I'm not even my heart. I've al I've always loved Alvin Kamara, but it's just like one you of those things. Into too. That other shit that like, age twenty nine, age yes. twenty seven stuff. You started reading, or too much or you that. hear a take. Sometimes it's like this random take that you hear. That's like, man, that's not a bad take. And then you kind of like, well, that take makes a lot of sense. Maybe I could. I don't want to say use that take or anything like that, but it's like it influences your your process a it little. Think that's why I try yeah. to just like tune out what other people say and just kind of come up but sometimes it's really hard to do when you're in this space for you I, I always, you know me bro i'd be on an island by my fucking self when yeah I, half the time. yeah and i i try to do the same where i just have my own personal takes but there's always those people that you respect in the community and you kind of look like i don't want to say listen but 
you, you respect what they say and they say one thing and it's like, damn, I never actually thought about that. That's not bad. So, and, and the one guy was Joel. Yeah. Uh, Joel, Joel. And I love oh, Joel. Joel Smith. Yeah. He, yeah. he loved Jonathan Brooks. And I was like, damn, maybe I am being a little bit out of, or too harsh on Brooks this year, but I still, like you said, I still think as long as he plays, I think he's a good prospect. I think he's a very good prospect. And I think he would have went high in the draft if he didn't tear his ACL. Um, but he's we'll see but it's also another injury he's coming off acl we don't even know if he's going to be how good is he going to look i mean shit so. he's not even active this week they got week 10 and then they got the week 11 by like we're not even going to see him probably over 10 touches until after yeah. by until week 12 so, so yeah that's tough sledding for anybody who drafted him but hopefully we get him back on the field and he's able to make up for it when it matters most but for trade talk, we got more coming your way, guys. Obviously, this is a pivotal point of the season, so we will be on probably a little bit more as uh, over the next couple of weeks. But any questions you guys got, feel free to drop them in the comments. We will see y'all on the next one. Peace out.